Hello everyone, CSWord here, and this is an update for the One Chunk Mega Furnace Array. I have all the components needed to build it, I have yet to put it together. That will be in the next video. This is just going over those individual components leading up to it. Starting with what didn't work, my original thought was to use a simple cart separator system where we would take all the items out of a chalker box, put them in a water stream, have them perfectly aligned, and then we have two sets of 14 uh, hopper minecarts, which is one more than the number of stacks in the chest go over those and then they go into cart separators and exactly after 10 seconds this would be fully distributed however the problem is with some of these let's see if i can grab one they are not a full stack and that's because items broken out of a chest or choco box do not always stack up to 64. and on top of that the hopper minecarts were sometimes picking up more than one stack of items within the same tick i don't know how that's possible but that seemed to be the case but none of that mattered because in the bedrock edition, there is no cart separation. I've tried many, many different designs, however, I simply cannot get them to separate. So, this design is not feasible on bedrock whatsoever right now. My next idea then was to do uh, individual stack separation, and this is a uh, methods design. We line up all the items against the wall there, we throw them forward, and clear my inventory. We pick up 62 here, so we're not getting the full stack size. 63. Let's see if we can get one that's actually 64 here. 57. One more try. And 60. Alright, so I didn't get a full stack of 64, but this shows that, again, it's not consistent the stack size that you get out of your broken chest. This becomes a problem because, assuming you do get 64 in a stack, you need each layer of the furnace array to have 64 furnaces, but because you end up with less than uh, 64 in each stack, that means there's going to be more than 27 stacks, so you'd end up with more than 27 layers of the furnace, and that just becomes a little bit too complicated to figure out exactly how much you need. And so, in other words, both of these two methods just aren't going to work, and rather than complaining about the bug, I decided I'd work around it, and make a design that works on both Java and Bedrock. Now my first idea was to go back to Tango Tech's idea of using a hopper minecart over more hopper minecarts at 8 meters per second, the hopper minecarts will pick up five items on the Java edition because on Bedrock the hopper minecarts pull at half the speed, meaning we'd end up with three hop three items in these hopper minecarts. But if we went at half the powered rail speed, four meters per second, on Java we'd end up with ten items in the hopper minecarts, which would be perfect for fitting within one chunk. But the problem then is we have 320 items in the hopper minecart, and we have four layer, we have eight. Uh, rows in each layer, so we'd have four layers, meaning at four meters per second times 16, that's four seconds per layer, times four layers, that's about, that's going to be about 20 seconds, assuming, uh, including the amount of time it takes for the hopper minecart to fall, meaning uh, you end up with quite a bit of extra time. But that doesn't matter, because, because again, by the recognition, we need to travel at two meters per second along this top rail line before sending off the hopper minecarts. That's so slow that by the time the hopper minecart reaches the very end here, if you sent these off one at a time, the first hopper minecart would almost be done completely smelting the first item. That is very slow. So, this seems like it could be used for something else, but I'll put it on the back burner, because I made a more robust and consistent design. And before you ask, yes, the designs work on both Java and Bedrock. In fact, they are completely identical to every last dial on the feeders. So, we start off by having a shulker box eater to destroy the shulker box so we get the full chest and the items are thrown in the water stream up against this wall there, fall down onto the pressure plate for a signal to be sent to deactivate the torch to start a simple clock. This clock is going to dispense a new hopper minecart uh, as it needs it and then the torch here will send a signal to open up this fence gate briefly so that the old hopper minecart that is full of items will pass through, fall down onto this rail line move along here and because all of these lanes are not facing into the curved rails are not facing into the individual lanes it'll make its way all the way to the end here where it'll then cross over this uh, powered rail or pressure rail and if I go ahead and put one here we see that it will change the direction of this rail so that then when the next hopper minecart comes along it goes along this lane and you repeat that all the way along this is just a simple setup of having a torch underneath of that block and it goes up into a torch tower off to the side and then into this. If you are in a wrong location, you can simply fix this by changing the inverting the signal by having a staggered torch tower 
and have the torch in the opposite state. However, in my particular setup here, I needed it to be straight up like so. In Bedrock, I did need to curve it to the side. Anyway, let's see this all in action. This is Il Mango's Shulker Box Eater, so let's eat some Shulker Boxes, throw the items into the water stream, have Hopper Minecarts begin picking them up, and we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, and I know it looks like the sixth one didn't pick up any items, but it does in fact pick up two stacks of items, and all the other ones have five full stacks. Meaning, each of these Hopper Minecarts have 320 items. Now from here, we could have each of those go into a furnace ray of 320 furnaces. However, at 8 meters per second, assuming you're on just regular powered rail, that would take a total of 40 seconds for each Hopper Minecart to pass along all of those. Plus the additional 10 seconds to smelt, meaning we're looking at 50 seconds for each Hopper Minecart to fully smelt the items. Which isn't that bad, but we could actually improve this. In fact, if we perfectly position the Hopper Minecart over the corner of a block so that it's over 4 blocks, we can cut that number in a quarter. 320 divided by 4 is 80. Now where have I seen an 80 cart furnace array before? Oh yeah, I built that in the last video. So, that's exactly what I did over here, but let's go ahead and first demonstrate this on the Bedrock Edition. For starters, we have uh, Nebula Kate Kakapo's Chalker Box Eater. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Same thing, we just destroy all the Chalker Box and have all the items sent to the bottom. Same thing on the bot. Same thing with the cart distribution. They end up in their own separate lanes. And I did have to make one slight change here on the better condition. For some reason, this first lane didn't need a repeater up top. Whatever. These are customizable depending on the lag of the server. Anyway, we have two stacks in the end here. Full, 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 and you guessed it, full. So we have that perfect distribution. Now going over to the other module, might as well show it in the better condition because it's the exact same. We will have the full hopper minecart land on this rail, either from falling or from a series of track lines. It will then move along, go up here, be pushed against this fence gate, so it's positioned over these two blocks, and then after some delay because of this pressure rail, the piston will push forward and push it, the hopper minecart up against this trap door. What that's doing is it allows us to be perfectly positioned over four rail lines. We then dispense four hopper minecarts underneath that, and we'll see that it picks up exactly 80 items, because they're all pulling equally. 64 plus 16, perfect. Alright. And now, from here, I'll send it back. When I press this button, this piston will push the hopper minecart forward, so it snaps back onto the rail. Then after a little bit of delay, the sticky piston in the back here will push this block forward, so that the hopper minecart is on powered rail next to a solid block, meaning it will be given momentum that direction. Meanwhile, on the bottom, I'm just sending a signal down, and to these blocks, same thing as before, solid block, powered rail, give them momentum. And what's going to happen over here is we're going to separate those two hopper minecarts into two different layers. And we'll see this all at once, just like so. I'll show this a slow, uh, slow down on the Java Edition where I can actually explain it, but let's go ahead and look over a little bit of this more. So one important thing was to make sure that this would work if there are full or empty hopper minecarts on the bottom here. That's because if you don't end up with a full uh, full inventory of the hopper minecart, like this one that only has two stacks, you'll end up with different speeds of the hopper minecarts. And even if you end up with completely empty hopper minecarts, and there are still ones here, I wanted to make sure that this system would not break. Meaning it's quite ro robust and really hard to not work. Uh, because this does work on both Java and Bedrock, and there's no bugs or glitches being used, I'm 100% certain that this will last and endure the test of time. So, going back over to the uh, Java edition, we have the same setup, exactly the same, again, every every last part of it. We have the hopper minecart, we'll fill it up with items, oh. fill it up with items, fill it up with items, and we see that it's positioned, again, perfectly over the rails here. It does look a lot better and not completely sideways like on the Bedrock edition. I'll go ahead and throw the hopper minecarts underneath, because we're on Java, so it'll only take a couple seconds. Okay, and we'll send it back, and we see that everything is distributed. Okay, let me go ahead and clear these and slow the game down when I run this again. So we will distribute these. I will do a tick rate for five seconds. Now when I hit this, I'm going to try and make my way over here as quickly as possible so we can see it in slow motion. Alright, so we saw that the ones in the front 
bumped up against the fences here and fell down and snapped onto the rail here. Because the ones in the back were still moving forward, they gave the ones in the front a little bit of momentum, and so they were able to continue along the rails here. Let's, un let's uh, fix the tick right here. Meanwhile, the ones in the back, once they hit the ones in the front, fell down and snapped onto the rails, they still had a little bit of momentum going forward, and so they kept going into position. If there were ever a time where the hopper minecarts were to collide and the ones on the back had negative momentum, they would fall down, bump into these blocks, and move forward again. So, all in all, I'd say that this is a successful uh, module. So, in other words, we start by taking shulker boxes, yeeting them, distributing them into six hopper minecarts, and then from there, each of those six are divided into four, meaning we should have 24 layers of the hop of the furnace array. Uh, in theory, technically, the last one we could do something about it because it's not actually uh, 320 items, it's 128, but maybe that could be solved in the final design. Anyway, before I move over to the final portion, the actual furnace array part, I should mention that I did try using curved rails to try and distribute the items, but for some reason it it behaves very differently how hopper minecarts pull items based off a hopper minecart above it. In fact, right here it's not even pulling any items whatsoever. On Bedrock Edition, sometimes it's the back two, sometimes it's all four of them. It seemed rather inconsistent. And that I was also testing if I want to have the timer be module independent or if I want to put it on a global scale. Again, I don't know at this point. That'll be for the final design. But as things stand, these two portions are ready to go. And then the final portion on the bottom, or second to last portion on the bottom, is also ready to go. Because the 80 cart furnace array had so much empty space in the back here, that gives plenty of room for hopper minecarts to fall down onto track lines and make their way through each of the furnace arrays. Now it takes 10 seconds for the hopper minecart to make its way all the way through here, and 10 seconds for the last item to be smelted, so 20 seconds in total. We're looking about 20 seconds, or another 10 seconds for the items to be distributed, and then another few seconds for the items to make their way to the chests here. Although I'll change this out for uh, probably a dropper method, and have that go into a water stream in the center to push all the items back up to the top, meaning we're thinking, I'm thinking it's gonna take about either a minute, minute and a half, 60 to 90 seconds for a full shulker box to be smelted. But then all subsequent shulker boxes after that should be exactly 10 seconds. So to do a double chest in theory, it should be exactly like 100 seconds, which would be half the time it took as the double cart array or the quad entity list design I showed off in the previous video. In other words, this is going to be fast, but I have to build it first. However, there is one other problem, and that is how we're going to collect the items in the end. Because shulker box, because there is no easy way to load shulker boxes, depending on what speed of a shulker box loader we decide to go with, if it's just a 6 or an 8, we will need 9 or 12 modules to keep up with multiple shulker, shulker boxes being loaded. I might just leave it so that the player has to manually put the items into shulker boxes, because that would save, off, save quite a bit of time and resources. But, I don't know, I'll, ha I'll, I'll have to figure that out, because that's all I got for today. The final thing coming in part three. That's all for now. Goodbye.